And I'm super excited for today because we have a phenomenal guest. His name is Jonathan Jones, and he is actually a um, a best-selling author. So he wrote two books, but one of the books is called Get Paid for Podcasting. So he is a podcast mentor. He actually is the host of the podcast, Your Podcast Mentor Show, and he is speakers on the PodFest. So I'm super excited to bring our guest for this masterclass today, Mr. Jonathan Jones. Hey, Jonathan. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Thanks for having me. Thanks for You're having so me. welcome. Thank you for being here. We're super excited for this masterclass and to just get all the wealth of knowledge that you are going to be dropping today. You have the floor. Excellent. Excellent. May I have screen sharing capabilities? If not, then I, I mean, I, I can flow without it. But uh, yes. if, I, if, if I can have that, that'd be dope. That'd be dope. But yes, yes I mean, if, let me know if it works. Okie dokie. Yeah, we're good. We're good. All right. So every everybody was hopping in here sh sharing a win. So I I want to I want to get a win in really quick. But before I do that, I just want everybody to just just comment the word focus in the chat. Comment the word focus in the chat because at the end of the day, focus. We have to follow one course until successful. Right. Got to follow one course until successful. So for me personally, for me personally, my win this morning. Y'all, I, I woke up early with my wife. We got outside our house and then we decided to paint the fence. Like we stained the fence. I still have some of the stain on me right now. I'm not sure if any of y'all have done that before. We're not done yet, but we're focusing and locking in until we get that thing completed. So that is my win. Uh, we're about three fourths of the way through. So I'm excited to be here with you all. I had to get a great nap in earlier. Um, so I could prepare and put this thing together uh, and share with you all uh, what, what we have tonight, what we have tonight. So we're going to go ahead and dive in. Is that cool with y'all? Is that cool? We can dive in. Some, somebody give me a thumbs up or somebody say something to me. Yes, let's dive in. Come on, Kayla. You got to give me more energy than that. You can't come off a mute like that. You yeah, come John, off mute. yeah, John. Somebody let's go. Me. I'm sorry. Somebody <laughs> yell at me. I see you, Orlando. Okay, Ashley. What's going on, Rohan? Okay, we're in here. We're in here. All right. So look, so look, at the end of the day, if you all do not know it yet, by the end of this presentation, you will. And you're going to be like, man, I'm ready to get this thing going. Y'all podcasting, the podcasting industry is a hundred billion dollar industry. Somebody write a hundred bill in the chat. Podcasting is a hundred billion dollar industry by 2028. This thing is projected to be a hundred billion dollars. So therefore, therefore, if you have not started a podcast yet, the best time to start a podcast would probably have been about five years ago. But the second best time to start a podcast would be today and would be right now. So look, I'm going to show you all how you can use podcasting to help you ultimately increase your leads and increase your leverage in your industry. Right. So if you want more clients and you want to understand how you can take a podcast and do that, that's what we're going to do tonight. So, look, this training is is for you. If, if you're looking to establish yourself as an authority in your industry, like being the go to expert. OK. Secondly, if you're looking, like I said before, to attract new paying clients in your business to where you don't have to barter, but to where you bring people in to where they say, I'm ready to pay you and I'm ready to pay you the fee that you request based on your authority and your expert status, right? This training is for you, all right? It's for you if you wanna find a way to increase content that will give you further visibility online. And then lastly, if you wanna charge your worth instead of the price that people have been paying. Does that sound good? Anybody, does that sound good? That sound good? That sound good? All right, all right. So look, quick quick bio on me. So I, I've invested, this says 30K on here. I probably invested easily like 40K in the development of my own business, which, you know, at this point, I've produced about five different podcast shows. I've produced over 450 episodes. And after doing that, that's what leads us to like this point. OK, so y'all are going to learn a little bit more about me through this presentation. But most importantly, at the end of it, you're going to know what you need to, 
to start a podcast. And then you're also going to know how you can leverage that podcast to get paid. Okay. Okay, Anthony. Okay, Melanie. Okay, Ashley. Let, let's, let's get into it. Let's get into it. All right. And look, I want to let you all know at the end, if you stay to the end, right, this is the golden ticket. We've all seen Charlie and the Chocolate Factory at least once. If you stay to the end of the presentation, then you are going to get the benefit of this special with the golden ticket. All right. So I got something special for you. Only if you stay to the end. Enough about me. Let's let, let's talk about you. And just so you all know, this will be interactive. So please comment in the chat. Comment in the chat. Comment in the chat. Comment in the chat. All right. So enough about me. Now let's let's talk about you. All right. So I want you to, for a second, just imagine what your life would look like when you understand how a podcast will directly benefit your business, right? Just, just imagine for a second, imagine. Imagine having a system that will help you consistently bring in leads and then put those leads in front of your products in order to get sales, right? Imagine that you have a platform to where you have the freedom and the tools that you need to establish your credibility in your given industry. Does that sound good? I know that sounds good. Somebody got somebody to talk to me. That sounds good. All right. Then imagine that you have the exact equipment and the processes you need to create that whole system, that whole strategy. Right. In a perfect world, a business is not a business if you do not have customers and or clients. A business is not a business if you don't have products, because business is the exchange of goods and services for a set fee. So we need more clients. We need to have products to sell to those clients. All right. But now I want to I want to just see, see if I'm talking to the right people. And, and I want you all to tell me, do any of these sound familiar? Drop a one in the chat. If any of these sound familiar, if it's more than one that hits home, just comment, comment a two or say, ouch. So drop a one in the chat if any of these resonate. But if it's more than one, just, just comment, ouch, in the chat. Are you tired of spending marketing dollars to yield you no return, right? Putting out money, paying for this, paying for that, but the marketing isn't even doing, the marketing isn't marketing, right? Are you tired of trying to fight to show your credibility in what seems like a crowded market? People are, you know, people are over here, people over there. You're like, wait, I mean, I thought I was the go-to in the space, but every time I look up, somebody else is doing something with this business or somebody else is doing something with that business, right? Okay, I'm seeing some ones. I'm seeing some ones. Are, are you somebody who's in a spot to where you're fearful of putting your voice out into the world because you're, you're not sure of what others might say, right? That, that imposter syndrome, right? That thing where it's like, I don't know. I want to say this. I want to you know, I feel like I am talented, experienced, et cetera, but at the same time, I don't know what they'll say about me. Or you don't have time, you don't have time to consistently put out content. John, I'm trying to get people in my business. John, I'm still working at nine to five, so I can't, I can't put out the content during the day because I'm, I'm teaching. Can't put out the content during the day because I'm, I'm working. I can't put out the content during the day because I'm trying to be here and do this and do that. I'm seeing the ones, I'm seeing the ones. Or, or, or what about this, what about this? You're, you're lacking clarity and you're unsure of where to get started. John, I know I can add value to somebody, but at the same time, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know where I need to start. I don't know where I need to go. And then the last one, I know I said it before, but I'm, I put it here twice on purpose. You are struggling with imposter syndrome, right? You are struggling. Because you feel that you're unworthy to be the messenger of the message for somebody else, right? Now, I see a lot of us said a lot of this has resonated. A lot of this has hit home. A lot of this is, you know, stuff to where you, me, we've all struggled with at some point in time, if not currently. But now let's, let's take a pivot and let's talk really about, let's talk about the life that you really desire. Right. Let, let's let, let, let's go there. Let, let, let's go there. And just comment amen in the chat if any of this hits home. Is, is this the life that you truly desire? Right. You want to have clear steps on how to get your ideas to the next level. 
You want to have control over your time and you want to feel valued for the work that you produce. When you put something out there, be like, oh man, Kayla, you did that. Danielle, man, that would say that piece of content that you put out that really spoke to me, right? You want people to acknowledge you as an authority in your industry. When people think of media, you want them to think of you, Danielle. When people think of, you know, whatever it might be, you want them to think of, of you, Jonathan, of you, Ashley. So you want to be the go-to in your, in your, in your field. Or you, you want to wake up with total control of your own schedule and you want to be your own boss. You want to say, I call the shots here. All right. I call the shots. You ain't telling me when to clock in. I clock in when I want to because I'm the boss. OK, I'm the boss. And then you also you want you want your finances to fit the life that you've always dreamed of. You say, you know what? The meat at the end of the month is not meeting where it's supposed to meet. But what about this one? What about this one? You want to have a way that builds credibility with clients. When you walk into the room, people already know who you are. They know what you do, and they're ready to spend money with you based on your credibility, based on what others have said about you. Well, here's the great, here's, here's, a, here's the great news. Here's the great news. You can have all this and more. However, there are some hard truths that you must be aware of, all right? And I'm going to rush through this because I know we only got so much time tonight. We got a lot to get to. All right. <laughs> the first one is, is this. Increasing your visibility through ads on Facebook and marketing and working with some of these companies, it can easily cost you up to 10K and easy. And that still might not even move a drop in a bucket. The second one is success isn't overnight, but a podcast can be live in seven days. Right, success can't just happen, boof. But we can get that podcast up and running. I'm gonna walk you all through the process tonight. The third hard truth is a podcast can help you in about six to 12 months if you remain to be consistent. What did I say earlier? Focus, follow one course until successful. 80% of people who start podcasts quit before six episodes. Follow one course until successful all right and then the fourth of our truth is you have to be able to accept the fact that there are some things that you just don't know orlando when it comes to real estate and when it comes to credit you might be that guy right but in some other areas there may be some things that you that that, that you just don't know just yet all right so here we go. Let's dive in. And, and I want you all not to worry, not to fret, because I'm going to show you all how to create your own truth, just like I did with some of my clients. And here's just a few. There, there's there's Aria Young. She said, I was stuck on how I was going to present myself in the podcast space. And then after we had a couple of conversations, she initially wasn't on the cover of her cover art. But as you can see her right here, now she is the star of her show. And uh, after we did some work together, I also helped her secure a three-month podcast sponsorship for, I think, right at like $1,600. Then there's Glenn P. Brooks. He said, I didn't have the wisdom and the expertise to know how to do the thing. And it's entirely different to have the wisdom to navigate properly. And that's what Jonathan did. Glenn P. Brooks is the host of the We All Need Some Help Wednesdays podcast. And then here's my good guy. Tim Jackson. He said, I was afraid to hear my own voice on video to now being someone who has a podcast on YouTube. So I want to say, Jonathan, thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your assistance in answering my questions. Is there anybody out there who is fearful of their voice? Comment on one in the chat if you're fearful of putting your voice out there. Just, just drop a one. And drop a two in the chat if you're somebody who's saying, I just don't know where to start. Comment a one if you're fearful of your voice. Drop a two if you're saying, I just don't know where to start. Good, good. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your honesty. All right, so let's, let's get this ship going. Let's get this ship going. So the only thing I ask you all tonight is just to clear your mind and forget about everything that you've learned in the past about establishing your brand as an authority, just clear it all out. Whoop, whoop, whiteboard, whoop, whoop. 
like windshield wipers, all right? And then I want you all to know that there are three secrets to establishing your brand authority and generating more revenue in your business. If y'all want me to get started, just put let's go in the chat and we're gonna rock this thing out while I get some sip of my water. Kayla yelling at me. She said, let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Bianca. Okay, okay, okay. You don't got to yell. You don't got to yell. Let's go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. I see you, Ashley. Let's get into it. All right. Number one, number one, number one. The first secret is called authority hacking. And this is how I was able to build my credibility and authority with, within my industry without using any marketing ads. It's called, it's called authority hacking. All right. And this is what authority hacking has done for me. But before I get there, if you have not, if you have not been authority hacking, this is how it's directly hurt your business. Okay. Directly hurt your business. Number one, you don't know how to use, you don't know how to do that using a podcast just yet. So if you don't know how to use it, then therefore you can't reap the benefit that some others might have. That's number one. Number two is you might be somebody who's been focused on gaining followers instead of building your credibility, building the trust with the audience, with the community. That can be a problem. And then reason number three is you don't have a trusted strategy. And if you don't have a trusted strategy, then over and over and over and over again, you're going to be spinning your wheels because you're going to stop, you're going to start, you're going to stop, you're going to start, you're going to stop, you're going to start. And then you won't be able to focus, follow one course until you're successful. So we got to get clear tonight. We got to get clear and we got to tap in and we got to focus tonight so that we can get to that success at the end of the word. All right. So. Let's go. The old ways of establishing your authority, y'all have seen this before, putting out video content daily. You gotta grind, you gotta, you gotta put out so many pieces of content that everybody sees you. They tell you go to all the local networking events. They tell you to pay to play. So you either pay to speak, you'll either pay for a booth, you'll pay to be in the room. And then sometimes that has never yielded a return for you. And then they tell you, join all the social networking events. They tell you, comment on all the posts. They tell you to send the code emails, send the DMs. And then at the end of the day, you look at your account and you see your accounts in the negative because everything that people have suggested hasn't worked out for you. But you're like, I'm following the process. What's going on? That's an outdated method of marketing. So the question you might ask, John, what's today's solution? How do I get started today? It's easy. You probably know it already. We're here now. You start a podcast. John, what, how did you even start a podcast? I started my first podcast, hanging out with my videographer. His name is Reginald Titus. I'm kicking it with Reginald. And then Reginald says, John, you're speaking. You want to get more gigs. You got to get in front of more people. Long story short, I told him it sounded like a bad idea. I went my separate way. He went his separate way. Then that night, right, that night, I said, man, he might have, he might be, there might be some truth to what he's been saying. So let me plug and let me make sure that I tap in because he's resourceful. He's wise. Long story short, there we go in the studio. Your boy is recording a podcast, right? That was about six years ago to this date. From there, then I had the opportunity to partner with some colleges across the country, partner with some corporations, do some speaking. But the benefit of you having your own podcast showcases your expertise. People see you as a leader in your industry. It provides a sample of your brand, right? When we go to the grocery store, they're trying to get, people, they're trying to get us to buy the new snack the new meal, a podcast gives that sample. The chicken, the, the bourbon chicken at the Chinese spot. It builds your network, the people you're connected to, as well as people that you desire to connect to. 
And then it provides you with a platform. You're not renting space on Instagram. You're not renting space on Twitter, TikTok, et cetera. You have your own network. So John, what's the process to start a podcast? Here it is. Get your phone, screenshot. Tag me on Instagram if you do screenshots. I'm at Jonathan Jones Speaks. But there it is. The process of the podcast is you have to get clear and identify your podcast purpose. Point blank and period, right? You have to identify what do I want this podcast to do? Do I want it to generate leads? Do I want it to position me as the authority? Do I want it just for me to teach? And then after you identify the purpose, the next thing we do is we got to record the audio. A lot of times we overcomplicate the process. We want the expensive equipment. We want all the mics and all that other stuff. What you need is your phone. And then what you need is the headphones with the mic jack. The phone right here that you all have, some of you all might be on Zoom on it right now. And you need the headphones with the little mic jack that you can speak into right here in the voice memo app on your phone. That is all you need to get recorded then you can edit the content yourself you can either you know send it off to somebody to get it edited i've edited my first 400 episodes myself okay so i would suggest you edit it yourself some people take out the ums they take out the ands and different stuff like that you might add on an intro might add on an outro it's not necessarily needed when you first start but then after you get that edited and cleaned up, then the next thing you need to do is you publish the audio. A lot of people struggle getting it out because they're like, I don't know what are people going to think about me, imposter syndrome, all of the things. So they don't hit publish. And then after you hit publish, you just promote it. You share yourself talking about dope stuff and talking about dope things. And from you doing that, then who knows? You can become the next earn your leisure. They started out before the pandemic with about 6,500 subscribers on YouTube. Now they're upwards of 653,000. And they started the same way I told you, phone, headphones with the mic jack, Voice memo app, if you want to do video, then record the video. But that's all you need to get started your, with the podcast. And I say master that before we get to this equipment and that equipment and all the other stuff. Let's start there. Let's master that. And then let's move forward. Because this, this, was, a, this was an award I got nominated for, or I got, you know, I got number one on the top indie tech news chart on the Good Pods platform, because like I was telling you all before, I've been consistent and people stop. After you start, you record the audio, you get it edited, you get it published, put it out, then put it out and then put it out. Keep continuing to put the content out. More people are going to drop off before even 10 episodes. So keep putting out the content, right? And then, but I, I want y'all to understand that th this, this is not where I started. That's not where I started. Where I started was about two years ago, I got married, right? Here we are, congratulations. We're about two and a half years into it now. The pandemic hits, I get paid to go do a speaking engagement. They look at me and they say, John, we know we paid you, but we need that check back. Has anybody ever like somebody told you they wanted your service, they paid you and it's like, you know what, I'm actually gonna need my money back because I can't do what I thought I could have did. So they took the money back. So my wife looks at me, I look at her. She look at me, I look at her. And then she said, John, something's not working. We need to do something. And she was being nice because what needed to happen was I needed to get a job, okay? Needed to get a job, but I didn't want to get a job because I'm an entrepreneur. I speak. I do podcast coaching. I do podcast consulting. That's not my jam. So what I did 
was I went to a seasoning factory. You can see at the top, it says 2020, May 2020, right there at the top. While I'm at this seasoning factory, I'm putting in long hours. The short story is it was wearing me out. The guy said, John, I need you. I need you. And then it took time away from the work that I was doing for my podcast. And one day he said, I'm going to need you to come. And I said, you know what? I can't. I can't. And then I went all the way in on podcasting. So let me rush through the end of this because I want to make sure that you all get the rest of this so you can see how to leverage the podcast and how to monetize it. So, so the next question you are probably going to ask is, John, how do I get people to listen to my podcast? I edit it. I put it out. I'm promoting it. How do I get people to listen to my podcast? The second way is content hacking. This is how you get other people to share your content for you while instantly building trust in you. Somebody drop trust in the chat. Just drop the word trust in the chat. Trust is needed for business. Trust is needed for relationships. Trust is needed for elevation of your brand. But at the end of the day, if people don't trust you or see you visible or credible, they will never do business with you. John, how do I get people to trust me? We're going to get there. But before I get there, I want to let you know, this is the old way of getting people to your content. This is the old way. This is the old way. This is the old way. You out here doing the dances on TikTok. You don't even like to dance. You don't even two-step. But you're still trying to dance out here. Stop dancing on TikTok. Stop dancing, right? Stop sending mass direct messages to people who don't know you, who don't follow you and have never seen you before in their life. Stop it, stop it. You're wasting your time, stop it. They're not even following you yet. And stop begging people to listen, tagging all these people in your posts. That's not cute, that's not cute, all right? Stop doing it, we gotta stop. So John, what do I do? I knew you would ask. Then yeah, why are you laughing at me? You gotta interview your audience and you have to interview your clients. If we're on this call and we're consultants, we're coaches, we're business people, you're going to bring people on a call. And then when you bring them on a call, you're gonna ask them questions. Why should you not record this call? And why should this call not be a podcast? Because at the end of the day, what it's gonna turn into, it's gonna turn into a testimonial when you help the person get results by you providing them some insight and tangible solutions on the call. That's number one. Number two is when you get people on the call, they see why they should trust you and why they should do business with you. Really quick, here's somebody I wanna introduce you to. His name is Coach Harris. He has a podcast called Life on the Court. Recording in progress. He said that it was tremendous value added for him to have the opportunity to have his own stage. By him having his own stage, and he went through my last podcast challenge, now he can bring whoever he wants to on the stage. When it's your house, you can invite whoever you want to over. And nobody can tell you no because you have the stage and you have the platform. So really quick, here's the four piece strategy to help you leverage the podcast. You identify your people. Who is your audience and who are your potential clients? Got to identify them. Number two, as you're identifying these people and you're giving them game, giving them insight, this positions you in the industry. You're the GOAT in the industry. You're the go-to. Number three, you present your purpose. What's the purpose of your podcast? Like I asked you all before, I said, if we don't have a clear purpose and we don't tell our podcast what we needed to do, it won't do it for you. That's not the way this works. And then the fourth thing, you got to be present on social media. You don't got to dance on TikTok. You don't got to do the two-step, but ultimately you got to be there and you got to be visible. And then the last thing I want to share with you all you say, John, you show me how to launch the podcast. You show me how to start the podcast. How do I get money from the podcast? It's called sales hacking, all right? And this is how I was able to consistently acquire new leads without having a lot of followers. 
in plain and simple, if people don't know what to pay you for, then they can't. If people uh, see you trying to piece together somebody else's strategy that you know don't work for you, it's a customized strategy. We don't know what's done on the back end. We don't know what that looks like. We don't know what that does. We need to make sure that we have a play that works for us. And then the last part is paralysis of analysis will have you out here stuck on stupid because we don't have a clear plan and we don't have a clear strategy. So how do we sales hack? When you bring the people on, you interview them, you're getting clear on what they're struggling with and what they need. And if you know what they're struggling with and you know what they need, then you can create it for them. So you need to give them a, an attractive offer. You need to give them something that they cannot reject, something that they cannot deny. So real quick recap, really brief. What I've taught you tonight was how to start a podcast. Comment amen in the chat if this is true. I've taught you how to start a podcast. I've taught you how to leverage the podcast. And then I taught you how to get paid from the podcast. You create an irresistible offer and the irresistible offer is where you create a high ticket offer. A 997, a 2497, a $9,997 offer. And you create this because it positions you at a premium level. People like Louis Vuitton, people like Grand Lux, people like Three Fort, like all these fancy, elegant brands that don't need as much foot traffic because they convert one sale and it gets them to what they need. So uh, ultimately, I wanted to uh, definitely make sure we hit on that. And Christine, I'm gonna kick it back to you. I, I know we do questions, so uh, let me know how you wanna roll with this. You wanna facilitate that. Um, and then after we do the questions, then I can just share with everybody uh, who hung after uh, the golden ticket. But but Christine, if you're if you're there, yes, I'm, I'm here. Thank you so much, Jonathan. We really, really, really appreciate you coming in and pouring into the family. So yes, I am going to open the floor for questions. Anybody and everybody, um, you can either raise your hand or unmute whoever has a question. Jonathan is here to answer. Hey, Jonathan, what's going on? What's going on, my brother Orlando? What's the word, baby? Um, Now, Jonathan, you know I'm not good at no podcast. I can talk my behind off. But, you know, I don't know the first thing about podcasts. And so, like, I mean, because um, I normally, like, just talk about what I know. Like, I know you had to format it, format the podcast and do all the the technical stuff. So how do you maneuver that being, being as though you never did it? You don't know what I mean? Cause I just talk about what I know, but scripting everything out, I'm not, you know, I don't know the first thing about how to lay that out, how to, you know, do none of that. So how you in progress. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so Orlando, I'm, I'm gonna hit you with some tough love. How are you going to come on here and say you don't know the first thing about podcasts when I just laid it out for you really, really quick? That's first, Orlando. You know this is love. <laughs> you know it's love. But but or Orlando, honestly, bro, it's, it, it, it's you doing what you do on a daily basis, but you just hit record. When you give somebody game on real estate, you hit record. You don't need to, the way I broke it down, you don't need to know the technical stuff. You just, at the end of the day, what is covered on the episode is you giving somebody a transformation. Back in the day, we've all seen the video, seven minute abs. What's the transformation? They're going to show you how to get abs in seven minutes. It might not happen, but that's what they're promising. And that's what you just, when you just take that into account when you do podcast episodes. Okay, what's the one transformation people are going to walk away with after this episode? Push okay. record. Right. I'm going to show somebody how to set up, how to uh, fill out the form for an LLC. That's an episode. I'm going right. to show somebody how to make a grocery list, okay? That's an episode. But at the end of the day, it's just creating a bite-sized transformation episode by episode by episode. Okay. And that's it right there. No, because it just looks so technical by 
how you lay it out, they do it. So, you know, it looks like it's got to be laid out and, you know, all that. Oh, you you tell you tell yourself that because you want to give yourself an excuse, Orlando. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Just be honest. It's fine, no, Orlando. No, no, that's what I thought. That no, technically that's what I thought. But I mean, I do that on IG and I, I lay game on IG. So I guess it's the same thing like laying on IG now. So, yeah, it's the it, you go you go IG live, record the IG live, download right, the video, and and then yeah. turn that into the podcast. Okay. All right. Pop it up on YouTube. Yeah, all right. Well, I'm going to need your help. I'm going to need your help how to do all that. Because, you okay. know, who do helping me out? But I I need you to show me how to do all that. Um, okay. All right. All right. But anyway, yeah, let me get off there. <laughs> Thank you, Orlando. Um, Danielle, I don't know if Danielle could unmute. But if not, she has a question. Her question is, can you repeat the sales hack, please? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so so the so the sale the sales hack ultimately is is coming up with an attractive offer. So it, it's putting the pieces together. So we start the podcast, then we interview our potential client, right? That's the biggest hack. You interview the potential client, and then as you're listening to them share in the interview, they're gonna share with you what they're struggling with in your current industry. They're gonna share with you what they need. And then there's always that time before and after interview where you get to chat with these people. And then you can see, hey, you know, uh, do you know anybody who's interested in seeking uh, marketing and media? They might say no for them, but then they might say, yeah, I have two or three other friends who might be. There it is. You see what I'm saying? Because it, it sets you up. It sets you up as the expert for one. But then when you ask them these questions, you help them pull out what the problem is. So now both of y'all can see it on the floor. Thank you so much. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Awesome, awesome. For sure, for sure. Um, Bianca, she has a question. Oh, go for it, go for it. I just wanna say, uh, I didn't really have a question, but I had a little, a quick story uh, kind of to Orlando. Um, I did a video on YouTube about two years ago. Was not trying to do a podcast, was not trying to get followers or nothing like that. I was filling out a, a government document called SF-181. Christina, you and I touched on this before on text messages for status correction. And one of the ways to uh, document that document is to do a video of yourself filling it out. And that video serves as a documentation for that for that document, for that form. Like I said, I wasn't trying to do nothing at all, but just document that I was filling out the document, I was gonna send it in, mail it to the, to the government, whoever I had to mail it to. So I went back probably early this year and I found that video again, it was like probably two minutes at the most. And, and I went back and I found that video and I noticed, uh, well, like I said, I, I wasn't trying to do nothing but document the form. And I went back and I noticed 12 people had joined or subscribed to that page. And I had 12 followers, just not even trying to get followers. I did a two minute video to document the form and 12 people subscribed to that video, to that channel. So now I have a channel and wasn't even trying to make a channel on YouTube. So I can go back to that same video and start making more videos on top of that. And people will just, people will find it and people will subscribe to it and they'll like it. And if necessary, they'll share it. So it's not complicated at all. I just had not had a chance or a reason to go back and expand on that. But like I said, Christina, you and I had talked about some of the stuff that we're gonna do. So maybe there's something I can build on. But Orlando, it's not complicated at all. Like you can do it accidentally and people are gonna find you and they're gonna subscribe to you. Thank you so much, Anthony. And that's so true. Like, all you have to do is just don't let fear hold you back. So, um, you know, you have to build up that courage and you'll be able to accomplish anything that you want. If it happened without you even really trying to make it happen. That's true. That's Anthony, we need to plug into because as uh, um, Christina told me. We could talk offline. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect you guys after this call. So Bianca has a question. Her question is: Are there children labor laws that must be taken into account if a child would like to start a podcast, Jonathan? 
Uh, I would say consult a legal advisor on that. Um, but in terms of children labor laws and starting a podcast, I would say no, unless you're like trying to force a child to sit there and record something uh, for a set amount of time. But other than that, I, I would say no, especially if the child is interested and it's something that they want to do. And then, you know, when they're tired or they're like, hey, I want to take a break, then, you know, letting them take a break. I, I don't I, I don't I don't think so. But once again, uh, this is not legal advice because I am not an attorney or anything like that. So I would say, you know, maybe, maybe consult a legal legal advisor on, on that one. That'd be my take. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Jonathan. Any other questions, comments for Jonathan? Yeah, Jonathan, when I'm gonna be on your show. <laughs> well, or Orlando, That's a good the way. Question. So, so, so the way my show works is I interview people with podcasts. That's why I help people start podcasts. So after they get started, then, you know, then I can bring them on, bring them on the show. So you got to have a podcast, Orlando. I, I, I interview podcasters and, you know, I talk about how to's and podcast news. So whenever you get a podcast up, let me know. All right. Or I could just eliminate your mortgage and we could talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> My man is a businessman. I love I love you, Orlando. <laughs> I actually had a, a question. Talk to me. Okay, so um just wanted to know. Let's say my child wants to do something like book reviews on books that they that they've read. Is that would just giving the author credit by saying, oh, you know, this book is by so-and-so and this is the illustrator, is that enough credit to the author to avoid being sued by the author? Uh, like, I don't want them to say, well, I didn't give you permission to talk about my book in, in your child's podcast. Yeah, so typically I feel that authors, like in the book, it says, you know, this is copyright and everything like that. And I think that's said because they don't want people to like take their book and try to reproduce it. But if you're giving a book review, then that's giving their book promotion, which a lot of authors I'm sure would appreciate additional promotion for their book. So giving credit, uh, giving credit to the author, giving credit to the illustrator and, you know, just giving an honest review. I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, but once again, I'm, I'm not, like I said, a legal advisor, but I don't think that there's an issue with that because podcasts, it's, it's your own, it's your own platform, it's your own space. And we're in the United States of America, so you got freedom of speech. As long as you just not like sitting there reading somebody's whole book and just, you know, going word by word, page by page, chapter by chapter, then I don't, I don't think that there, there should be an issue with that. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. As long as you put as long as you state who wrote the book and and like the publishing company and all that, they're not gonna they're not gonna say anything. But like you said, you can't sit there and read through it. But it, but if you're gonna read through it, you gotta reach out to the publisher and the author if you wanna turn it into like a book book read, like you reading the whole thing. So, but just giving a book review like this. They said they they're not gonna get upset about that because that's promoting the book. That makes sense. That makes sense. Thank you. So I have a question, Jonathan. I wanted to know what is like the minimum length of a podcast. Let's just say you don't have any guests and you're just doing it yourself, just to you know educate. What would be you know like the shortest you could do? <laughs> Um, the shortest you can do is whatever amount of time it takes you to create a transformation. I used to have two, two to three minute episodes. If you go look at my first show, which is somewhere, uh, it was on my YouTube channel, but type in like speaker success. Uh, my first couple of episodes would be like two to five minutes, okay. but it, 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 it can be, it can be that short or some people got two to five hours. It, it just depends on how long can you keep people engaged? And then it also depends on what's the transformation that's promised or that's gonna be provided through the episode. Okay, perfect. Cause I do wanna start an ep um, a podcast just like how you're recommending, right? For credibility, for brand awareness. And I'm pretty much just gonna call it my brand which is Seven Ways to Wealth but I didn't wanna bring any guests. I just wanted to be me and a mic and a camera. 
So thank you so you. much for and that. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Do you have any other suggestions on monetizing your podcast? I know uh, like YouTube um, is one way, right? Uh, YouTube is one way. Yeah, you need you need 4,000 watch hours and you need 1,000 subscribers in a calendar year. People don't talk about how difficult that could be. Uh, but let me not let me let me let me not even frame it like that because it might not be that difficult, right? It's a the process is simple ultimately, um, but at the same time, I've made more money monetizing through coaching, uh, and that's the way that I coach my I coach my community. I coach them to become an authority in your industry. Then when you then you can go do paid speaking engagements, right? I I, I was able to get a consulting contract with the University of Texas out here. And they wanted us to do what six months. So it's like six calls for $7,500 from me being at the crib. So speaking, consulting in your area of expertise, uh, outside of that, of course, like we said, books, um, those are, those are my favorite ways. There's a lot of other ways that are like more so like low level, like they got you know, Patreon and different stuff like that, where people can like give to you. But at, at the same time, those are, those are low level activities because it requires more work for a smaller fee. And I don't think anybody on here would wanna work harder to make less money versus being able to be on a call and make 2,000, 5,000, $7,000. So- Do you do, I, men hmm? do you mentor, mentorship? In, in terms of podcast yeah so my so my my mentor my mentorship group uh that i have which is the get paid podcasting community that's what we talk about like i walk them through the process of of you know how to start the podcast everything like that but then we spend a lot more time on helping them uh tighten up their message helping them get positioned by you know getting getting a tedx talk helping them be able to pitch you know schools and helping them to put together a package and them creating their first program. So that like, that's in my mentorship. Uh, my mentorship, it currently isn't open, but what I do have coming up, I have a, um, I have a five day podcasting challenge coming up. Cause I know Orlando, I know you said, you said something uh, about you, you wanted to, you want, you, you said something. And for, since, since I know everybody stayed to the end, I appreciate y'all rocking. And I see, I see where our time is, but I just wanted to make sure I share this with you all. Um, it, by, by any chance, though, is there is there anybody in here who has ever just comment yes in chat box? If there's anybody in here who has ever seen like people speak like on TEDx, like on the Red Circle, like and you've been like, I want to do that, like you wanted to speak or you want to get the opportunity to to present an idea in the TEDx like circle. Is there anybody in here? Yeah, Danielle uh, Jeter. She just did a TEDx in Atlanta a couple of days ago. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Congrats on that. She, she's a um she's a publicist, so she knows how to get herself, you know, in those places. Yeah, that's what's up. Well, I mean, there's there, there's a so there's a strategy to it all, right? There's a strategy to it all cuz I mean, I've I've done two. And there's a there's there's a strategy, but the what the only reason I wanted to ask and say is because like for you all since you all rock, y'all stay with me. Um there's something I want to do tonight. And just, just for the seven ways to wealth community. And like I said, I'm doing a five day podcasting challenge, walking through, cause we, we, we hit it at a high level tonight and everything I share with you is enough to get you started, but we couldn't dive as deep as I wanted to. But I have a link I'm gonna drop in the chat for the challenge. And, and what, what I wanna do is in, in that is gonna be five days with me and I'm gonna walk through everything from how to, you know, how to get clear on the purpose, right, of your podcast, exact equipment that you need when you decide to elevate your equipment, um, even how you get together your process, how you get your mindset right. 80% of people quit before six episodes, how you get the mindset right and everything like that. But I've shown this TEDx because for the first, like the first 20 people that sign up for the VIP uh, of the podcasting challenge. We got general mission and we got VIP, uh, which VIP is going to give you 30 minutes extra access to me every day of the challenge. And you will get instant access tonight 
to the TEDx training on how to secure your first TEDx talk. This is the value of $9.97, but I give it to you all for free if you sign up for a VIP for the podcast challenge. But I just wanted to let you all know that opportunity. I'm just going to leave it up for tonight. But after tonight, we're going to nix that. Um, but I just wanted to share that with, 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 with you, Christine, and, and, your, and your squad and your group. Um, because like I said before, podcasting is a $100 billion industry. And they need more people who are black and brown. Because when we speak, when we put our hands on something, we move the culture forward. So understanding that we have the next we have the next Oprah's in here. Now I bumped that. We don't have the next Oprah's. I mean, we 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 got we got Anthony Carroll in here. We got Orlando Acosta in here. We got Bianca D. We we got Erica E. Right. We we got we got Danielle Jeter. We got Ashley Green. We got Kayla Gooch. Jonathan Blake. Diana. Melanie. Like y'all are in here. Ronnie. Rohan. Linda. Like y'all are in here. We don't we don't need another Oprah. We don't need another Barack. We don't need another Michelle. We need people in here to understand that your story is valuable. And then when you began to share that story and that transformation, you can help create a level of freedom for somebody else. And we, we and I'm going to share this and I'm going I'm to I'm get off it. I'm going to share this and I'm going to get off it. I'm going to share this and I'm going to get off of it, Christine. But at the end of the day, it's so easy for us to complain about politicians it's easy for us to whine about the news. It's easy for us to say why we don't have what we wanted in our lives. But some of us, if we asked ourselves and we were honest, have we really made the sacrifice that we need to make to get what we want? And I'm not even, this, bump a podcast. A podcast is one vehicle of many. That's just my vehicle. Y'all, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I want us to think like, what is the area in my life that I want elevated? And then I want you to think, what's the best vehicle to get me there? That's it. I'm done. That's it. <laughs> and that is so powerful. And it's so true. And a lot, a lot of people, um, you know, they don't think about like the vehicle or their destination or how they're going to get from point A to point Z. So, um, you know, podcasting is definitely the way to go. Danielle said that we need more women podcasters too. So that is so powerful. And like, she is a woman in media. And so she, um, I remember her saying a couple of days ago that there's not a lot of black people in media or even that own the media, right? So this is another avenue. This is another way, like Jonathan said, that we have that freedom of speech for us to get our word out there. This is another form of media. So absolutely. And I know that I'm starting my podcast and I know that I need your assistance, Jonathan. So I am here for it. And I'm definitely going to take your offer and, um, and take that challenge because I want to get started right away. I already have the brand, but I need to build on that credibility. I love my community. I love, you know, the message that I'm spreading. And I know that there's how many billions of people, like there's so many people that need the message. So podcasting is definitely a way that um, that it can be done. Right. Yeah. Anthony said we don't own like at all. Like, you know, how how is it that we are controlling the narrative in media? We don't even own media. So it's up to us. Like you it's said, only, Jonathan. I, huh? think it's, I think it's only if I'm correct and I might be incorrect but i think it's only 17 17 black media companies uh in 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 the country wow you see that that's a low number so it's up to us and the craziest part about this is just like just like starting a podcast can be complicated the idea can be complicated and we can say Oh, there's too much to learn. I don't want to do it. I'm going to put it down. I'm not going to do it. But some of our favorite athletes, entertainers, et cetera, whoever, a lot of them are signing to other media companies, which then makes them a black voice on a white network, which is fine. I mean, it's fine. 
But at the same time, like everybody in here, we have the opportunity to create our own network. And just by starting a starting a podcast, and I'm gonna share the, I'm gonna share this stat, and then I'm I, I promise I'm done. We so, need to hear it. So that look, I'm I'm gonna share my screen on this because I, I want y'all to see this. So this is what you call the podcast index, and this shows the total amount of podcasts. So there are four million podcasts out there, right? Four million forty six thousand four hundred shows published in the last ninety days is four hundred and eighty thousand. Right, so we'll call it 481,000, but then we go to shows published in the last 10 days, it's 200,000. Then we go shows published in the last three days, it's under 100,000. What does that tell us? That tell us that people are really loud when they start in a podcast, but they really quiet when they quitting it. Wow, so, but, but let's, let's just say this, Jonathan. Talk to we got we, we gotta keep it real, real, real honest and keep it 100. We can't afford, and, and I'm glad you, you came on here because now you got me looking in another direction for real. But now it, it, it's getting me mad because it's like we we the biggest consumers on everything. Most definitely. But 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 social media, we don't own no media or 17 media companies that's that's black owned. That's it. That's it. So, so we can't, we can't, we can't be okay with that. We can't be, and you're right. We can't be okay with that because we got too many people pushing minority narrative in a negative light. So. Exactly. We gotta, we gotta control the narrative. Y'all bringing up some really dope points and I can't wait for you all to hear my TED talk because my TED talk was exactly about this topic about the absence of ownership black ownership in media so there are just to uh, share more insight there are there are more than 17 owned black owned media outlets however we don't own distribution and we don't own networks so therefore what Jonathan just said there's a lot of black voices, but they're all on white owned channels. And what we're doing is we're making more white, wealthy billionaire men owning all of the media in America. So right now, all of the media is owned by five major corporations. That's it. It used to be over 200. And what do they do? People actually invest in media and they start buying up these channels. That signifies a lot. So um, we have to get into the game. We have to do distribution. The reason why we have at least two black billionaires who are in media is because they own distribution, they own networks, and that's Oprah Winfrey and Tyler Perry. Oprah is Tyler Perry's mentor. Well, I think it's also um, um, you the own, other guy. You, should, you gotta own the production, you gotta own the network. It's not in content creators on other people's platforms. It's, well, it's, it's I think, well, I, well, I think it's three of them because uh, what's the name went to court and he sued, um, he sued um, Comcast. Uh, I can't, I can't, oh, I can't remember his name now. But it, it took, it, he, he, um, he took uh, Com, Comcast to court because he owned the Weather Channel. A millionaire, um, not a billionaire. We need more black billionaires. We have a lot of millionaires in the space, but how you get the billions is you own the production, you own the distribution, and you own the network. But you know who I'm talking about, though, right? You know Byron. who I'm talking about. Byron. Byron Evans, that's right. Byron Evans. Allen. Yeah. Byron Allen. Byron Allen. 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 My bad. Yeah, but y'all just talk, y'all just hit on a topic that that's that's what my all my work is about. So like, I just snapped on the TED talk. I can't wait for y'all to hear it. Uh, I pre-recorded it, so it's going to drop later in, in in another season. But yeah, that exactly what it was about. And the title of it is called "The Death of the Black Community Has Now Been Televised." Wow. Wow. Okay. So powerful. That's okay. it. Yeah. That's it for me, y'all. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle. We appreciate you. So, Jonathan, I hope you have a couple more minutes because there are some questions in the chat. Um, so wait, let me go back. I gotta find it. Um, so Ronnie asked if you can explain what Patreon is. Yeah, so Patreon is basically set up as a way to build community. So it's, it's what you would call like a paywall and, and it was created for creators 
So there's different levels. I'll just pull it up really quick just to show it. But there's different levels. So say, for instance, you pay a um, dollar a month to so that so okay patreon we'll say there's three different levels we'll just say bronze gold bronze silver and gold if you pay five dollars a month you'll get access to the bronze what's access to the bronze on bronze you might get to be joined in a text group or you might get access to a facebook group right so it's going to be limited access because you're paying five dollars a month then the next level will be like silver and let's say you're paying twenty dollars a month for silver then you might get access to the text group, access to uh, you know the same thing that they get in bronze, but then you also get a shout out on the show. And if you're a fan of a show or a particular creator, then it's gonna be like, oh, wow, I want the shout out. And then we'll say that there's gold. And let's say gold is like $100 a month. Some people, what they'll do is, they might say, well, since you're consistently paying $100 a month, I'll let you do an ad on my show. And this is, granted, this is examples that I've seen other people do, because like I said, I don't do Patreon. I know some people do like it, but I don't do Patreon. But they can let you do an ad on the show. They'll let you get the other benefits. And then maybe if they have an event in your home city, then you get to show up at the event because you're a gold member. So this is a way to create community, to create a tribe, but also giving people access behind a paywall. So... This is another way for creators to generate money. Some people are really successful on Patreon. Some people charge like $2 and they have like 150,000 people. So they're making a living off of Patreon, uh, but they're, they're, they're the exception more so than the rule from what I've seen. But that's really what Patreon is. Does that answer your question? Is that, is that a clear definition? You're welcome, you're welcome. Perfect. And then um, I have another question. I know that you mentioned mentioned um, sponsorship. So how do you get a sponsorship on your podcast? On my podcast or just in general? In general. Okay. Okay. So uh, at the end of the day, we, we know that businesses are looking for marketing and we know that the only way a business will be in business is if they're solving a problem. So if they're, you know, providing a solution for a problem that somebody's facing. So if your target audience is, we'll say, I don't know. So we'll say <clears throat> Canada Dry reaches out to you, right? Canada Dry reaches out. Like, Christina, hey, I want to, I want to, I want to talk with you, want to advertise with your people. And you like, mm, my people don't drink Canada Dry. They're more so upper echelon. They, they, might, they might enjoy, you know, like a Crown and Coke type situation. If you was Coke, then we could talk. So at the end of the day, by knowing that if you have a captivated audience who is also their demographic, and you know that they want to get in front of them, you just, you just connect the dots. You let them know why you're valuable. You also let them know that you know their audience and you know that they're struggling with marketing by way of what you've seen on Instagram or wherever. And then if you can return them an investment, I always make sure that my clients can return on the investment that the people give. That's how you secure a sponsorship. It's, it's reaching out, it's having conversations, seeing what the problem is, and then see how we can get innovative solutions to the problem. Ariel, who's in the presentation earlier, <clears throat> I, met the, I met the owner of the sidebar in Atlanta at a podcast conference. He was like, man, I want to get some people advertising about, about my bar. And I said, you want to advertise with podcasters? He said, yeah, Ariel, her show is called the Work and Play Podcast. It's a bar. So it comes together because one, she's in Atlanta. Two, it hits on the play of her podcast. So now when she advertises this to her entrepreneurial friends, y'all have been working so hard, we should go to the side bar and we should play. It's a match made in heaven because it 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 leans into what she's talking about in addition to the fact that he wanted to get in front of more people so he's getting what he wanted she's getting what she wanted that makes sense yes it does it makes complete sense okay. that's awesome so podcast equals growth huh it equals growth for your business and equals growth for your brand right growth exposure and and if you align partnerships the right way then you definitely can okay I'm going to give this and I'll be done. I'll give this and I'll be done. Okay. You asked what were other ways to monetize? So I recorded this book. 
I mean, I wrote this book, right? Wrote this book. I had it on my on my Instagram to where people can get it for free. Um, if if y'all if y'all want a free copy, DM me the word free. DM me the word free uh, on Instagram, and and I'll, I'll give you a, a free copy. You just got to cover the shipping. But I partnered with a a podcast company because they do what you call private podcasts. So it's not something that the whole world will get access to. It's just something that a certain a certain people will get access to. So I partner with them. They didn't charge me anything. And they're like, John, you can record on our platform. You can use our platform. We just want to get more exposure. So another way is have a private podcast. Make people pay you for the private podcast. You don't have to record episodes every week. You can just drop so many episodes, which is what I did with this. I dropped episodes breaking down the parts of this book. And then I recently added in two other chapters. One, I talk about how you can write a book because my dad, he helps authors do best-selling books. I hired him, paid him 5,000. He did a call on my mentorship because he paid and he's a part of my mentorship. I took that audio and I made an episode on my private podcast. So people who want to write a book, there's a, there's a episode in there where I show you how to do that. And then had Jaleesa Smith. She's YouTube. She knows YouTube. She talked about why YouTube is beneficial for her podcasters. Had her do a session in my mentorship because she just launched her podcast. And I took that package together and I made that another episode. And that's a part of my audiobook. But that's another way you can monetize the podcast by having a private podcast and recording additional content, bonus content, whatever you want to call it, and giving people access if they pay or you can give it for free. But that's just another way that's phenomenal well how do you make it private like how do you give them access is it on like apple and spotify do they have like a separate section so let me just show you the backside really quick <clears throat> and i know some people gotta go so if y'all do i understand yeah <laughs> jonathan me... giving all the gems y'all need to squeeze him for what <laughs> for what he's given so we appreciate uh... you is it on here okay so the back side of the private podcast looks like this okay so oh shoot okay so what we what we do is because i just like i just released this not not long ago so it says subscribers right here and um if i wanted to i can just add somebody's email right here and then they would have access to this uh, audio book or to this, this private podcast. But um, the, people who, the people who get my book, there's an, there's an offer for them to also get access to uh, my audio book right after when you get the book for free, there's an option to get it. But ultimately that, that's how you do a private podcast. Um, Apple does have private podcasts. Spotify also offers private podcasts. But the thing is, they chart apple's gonna take 30 percent from your private podcast um spotify i don't think they're charging initially uh but i haven't taken the time to really look at the inner workings of spotify to put it up on there because i didn't want to i wanted to run it through this platform um but yeah at, at the end of the day the podcast fountain is running and with it being 2022 we still got six years. We still got six years before it's going to be a hundred billion dollars. So somebody can start a podcast tonight. They can fail for two years and then still have four years to establish their authority. Do with that what you will. That sounds like a win-win situation. <laughs> six years for what? By 2028, the podcast industry is projected to be a $100 billion industry. If anybody in here got, got, a, got 1% of $100 billion, I'm sure all of us would be cool. Oh, okay. But, I mean, if we don't have a podcast, then we can't benefit from it. Or if we're not in the industry, you know, it's just, it's just hard to get. Charlemagne got the vision. Charlemagne started the Black Effect on iHeart Network 
And after his contract is up with iHeart, I'm sure he's going to take his talents and leave and just do his own thing elsewhere. Smart. Smart. Because he got the talent, which mm-hmm. is Black people. His show is called The Black Effect for a reason because everybody is Black over there. And they and they doing their thing in their respective areas. Yeah, but then he's going to have ownership with his podcast versus, you know, he doesn't have ownership with iHeart. So he's going in the right direction. That's the best thing about podcasts is that we don't really need mainstream media anymore to get our message out. We can come on something just like this with our cell phones and get our message out there. We don't need Channel 2 and Channel 11, NBC, ABC, MSNBC. We don't really need them. And I think they're going to get on to that and they're going to start pushing for some kind of government regulation. They're going to do something to block it because it's hurting their pockets and it's hurting their, their power plays. So, I like, mean, eventually, but we, I mean, we, but we still can benefit from the industry before they do. Oh, yeah, of course. Absolutely. I have a question. Hello? Hey, Jazz, we can hear you. Hey. Hey. (laughs) So um, actually, Christina knows I have been working on my podcast on the side. I have a few episodes and I'm planning to launch maybe fall, but I actually wouldn't know like what's the first step. Like, do you recommend all platforms and does every single platform take a percentage off of your uh, podcast once you start? You know, like that's where I'm like uh, right now I'm just building and editing and then I was going to just launch maybe in fall. So what do you recommend? You said what would I recommend in terms of what you said? platforms take it what what platforms are yeah. you talking about? Is yeah like should i do spotify itunes like make it accessible everywhere or where do you think is the best place to start uh well i would say go where the people are primarily listening and that's that's your apple that's your spotify your google play but they they don't take a percentage from your well i mean because there is no percentage to be taken um like with with just your podcast being a public podcast there's no percentage to be taken Okay, Unless I wasn't sure like, if you had to pay. That's what I'm saying. I didn't know you if you had to pay to have it on these platforms. Well, no, you don't have to pay to have it on those platforms, but you need to pay to have it on a hosting provider unless you go with the Anchor, uh, which is free. But I don't recommend Anchor because if you start and you don't have some skin in the game, then it's, it's a lot easier to quit. Uh, but also, uh, I, I believe everybody's brand on here is easily worth 12 to $50 a month. All the host providers aren't even like 50 a month, but I'm just saying, but if, if we can invest 12 to 50 into the, into the brand, or we want to take it serious, then, you know, we might want to do something else. Just maybe. Thank you. So then you recommend after it has a few months, then um, people that want to be a part of maybe sponsorships end up coming to you, or you recommend reaching out to people that are kind of like, towards the genre that you're talking about i recommend the reaching out if if you want to if you want to get sponsorships i recommend reaching out but the first thing the first if i was to say what products should you have starting out what products should i have what products do i need starting out the first product i would say would be the first product i would say would be like an ebook and then from the ebook create a course then from create a course then start speaking because right there you can go from well i work my way down because speaking novice speakers make anywhere from five hundred dollars to twenty five hundred dollars that's like new like new people so you can command that speaking on the topic that you've established your credibility on from your podcast and then also uh like i said before if you put the ebook out the ebook also gives you something to build credibility upon and um then from the course you get testimonials that also further gives you credibility so i say ebook course then uh then start speaking that would be my way to monetize i i wouldn't suggest going after sponsors you can and like i said i uh, help rel get you know get a sponsor for what like nineteen hundred dollars nineteen hundred sixteen hundred i can't remember but i i wouldn't i wouldn't recommend that because if you get the sponsor and they're expecting you you to help them return on the investment, and then you can't help them return on the investment, 
then that turned into a great $1,900 experiment. And then now they don't want to do business with you because it didn't return. But on the other side, if it does return, you know, then great. Then you can lock them in for another term or whatever it might be. But you just want to be clear on what you're asking of them and what they're expecting of you. Awesome. And then for when you get to the spe like speaking part, do you usually just like um, do your research on like places that you want to start speaking at or do people end up start reaching out to you? Um, it's the opposite. The, the, the lie that we've been told in this world is that we're going to be hunted. You have to hunt first before you're ever going to be hunted, just like you have to invest before you ever return anything. Uh, so I would say find the places that your experience will help you create a transformation for that entity and then have those conversations. Um, yeah, I mean, cause that, cause you don't know what the problem is if you don't ever talk to them. But if you're not ever in the industry, then you'll never know what the problem is or you won't ever know who to talk to. So we have to build those relationships. Just like when I was talking about in the presentation earlier, I said, interview your clients. Before I was able to generate 21K, and it was like a little less than three months speaking at colleges. First, I had, I had four years speaking experience. I'm not saying anybody needs that. You don't necessarily need that. But I did have about 150 calls with people in the industry that I wanted to speak in. I asked them, what's the struggle? I asked them, uh, what are they doing well? I asked them where they need help. And then after they shared those with me, then I was like, oh, then I created a free ebook. Then I created, uh, well, I created a free ebook. Then I started speaking. Then I created a different course. But the same strategy I'm sharing with you all, I believe in it. Same strategy I'm sharing with you all, it works. Um, but the only problem is people quit too soon. Focus. Follow one course until successful. Focus. That's the name of the game. Thank you so much. You've been awesome. Thank you. Phenomenal. Thank you so much for coming out tonight and dedicating a whole hour to this community and just pouring into us and educating us. We really, really appreciate it, Jonathan. For those of you that want to take advantage of his five-day challenge, I am going to email it to you. So take a look at your inbox in like the next five minutes after we get out of this call. I know that I am definitely going to participate in the challenge because I'm going to start my podcast. I'm not going to hold, hold back any longer. I know that um, I'm a talker. So thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate you. I will see you guys on Friday for the book club or if you're coming um, next Wednesday for the master class. Be safe and thank you so much for coming. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.